Well, so much for Jack ashore. But Newfoundland now, and the Maritimes in particular, there's the place where the fishing is the thing. And many's a man would spend half of his life or more riding the waves in the cruelest weather. But the fishing, of course, has always been a seasonal thing at best. And after the fishing season is done, the only thing to do was to sit, sit back and yarn about all the adventures you had out in the ocean, out on the ice floes and catching the fish or doing whatever. And there used to be a, a steamship called the SS Kyle that made its way around the coast to all the outports that didn't have any, any roads to them. And in the smoke room of the Kyle, all the men would gather with a little bottle of screech and they'd lay back and they'd tell stories. And they'd build upon those stories one after the other. And there was one fellow called Ted Russell who put together from his recollections, I'm sure, this little piece of recitation that he called the smoke room on the Kyle. And I'll try to do it for you now. Tall are the tales that fishermen tell when their summer's work is done, of fish they've caught, of birds they've shot, of crazy risks they've run. But never did tell, never did fishermen tell a tale so tall by half a mile, as Grandpa Walcott's told that night in the smoke room on the Kyle. With backy smoke from twenty pipes, the atmosphere was blue. There was many a, have another boys, and no mind if I do. When somebody suggested that each in turn should spin a yarn about some circumstance he'd personally been in. Well, the tales were told of barrels bent to shoot around a cliff, of men thawed out and brought the life that had been frozen stiff of bank pots carried off by flies and pathways chopped through fog, of woodsman Bill who barefoot kicked the knots from a 12-inch log. While the loud applause grew louder when Uncle Billy Shea, he told of the big potato he'd growed in Ganner Bay. Too big to roll through the cellar door, it lay at rest nearby. Until one rainy autumn night, the, the pig drowned in its eye. Well, meanwhile, in the corner, his grey head slightly bowed, sat Grandpa Walcott's, the oldest, 83, the oldest of the crowd. Well, upon his weather-beaten face there beamed a gentle grin when somebody shouted, Grandpa, it's your turn to chip in. Boys, leave me out, says Grandpa. Then, oh, thanks, don't mind if I do. All right, boys. If you insist, I'll tell you one that's true. This story is about Jig and Squid I'm going to relate. It happened in Pigeon Inlet in 1888. Me, I was just a bedlummer. A fishing with my dad in the prospects for the summer were looking awful bad. The cape and skull was over and hadn't been too bright. And now with August come and gone and nar a squid in sight. Day after day we searched for bait, till dark from early dawn. We dug up clams and cockin' hens, till even these were gone, but still no squid. So in despair, we gave it up for good. And we took our gear ashore, and we went to cutting firewood. One day, when we were in the woods with all the other men, I wondering if we'd ever see another squid again, my father broke his axe that day, so we were first ones out. And as we neared the land wash, why, we heard the women shout, Come hurry, boys, the squids is in. Well, we jumped aboard our boat, and we hurried out the harbour, the only crew afloat. But then our keel began to scrunch, like scraping over skids. Father, says I, we've run aground. Me son, says he, them squid. He says, the jigger, heave it out. And quick as a flash I did. Why, and as soon as it hit the water, it was raffled by a squid. <laughs> I, I hauled it in. But what do you think? Just before it cleared the rail, damned if there wasn't another squid. Clung to the first one's tail, and another clung to that one, and, and so on, in a string. Well, I tried to shake them loose, but my father says, You foolish thing, you've got something that was never seen before in Newfoundland. Drop the jigger. Grab the string and haul hand over hand. 
Well, I hauled that string a squid until the boat could hold no more. Then I hitched up the risings and started for the shore. While the men was running from the woods, they'd heard the woman bawl, but my father says, Don't hurry, boys! We've squids enough for all! So he passed the end to Jonas Brown till he hauled in enough, and Jonas passed the end around to his neighbor, Natty Cuff. And from stage to stage, that string were passed throughout the whole night long, until Donnan found it on Eastern Point with Uncle Billy Strong. And Uncle Billy, quite thoughtfully, before he went to bed, took two half hitches of the string around the pump on his stage head. Next morning, Hartley's Harbor heard the news, and up they come, with a trap skiff and six pairs of oars to tow the string down home. Well, after Hartley's Harbor had enough the following afternoon, from place to place that string were passed until it reached Quare Poon. After that, just where it went, I don't exactly know. But some say it crossed the straits and landed in Fort Hull. Yes, tall are the tales that fishermen tell when their summer's work is done. Of fish they've caught, of birds they've shot, of crazy risks they've run. Yet never did fishermen tell a tale so tall by half a mile, as Grandpa Walcott's told that night in the smoke room on the Kyle.